Man, that vacation to my parents' house was just what I needed. It really sucks being so far away for so long. I wonder when I'll be able to see them next. Ugh. Can I just take the train? Oh. There isn't a direct route. And it will take, uh, nearly two days. This is an all too common scenario in the USA, the wealthiest country on the globe, might I remind you. Hi, I'm Max, and I stream City Skylines, Sundays at noon CST. I swear, this is not just a plug, it actually has meaning. <laughs> what I've been doing on Twitch is rebuilding my old cities, turning suburban hellscapes into urbanist darlings. And while there isn't high-speed rail in that game per se, whenever I do implement any type of rail in that game, I seldom do it like here we see here in the US. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Who is this beauty called the high-speed rail? High-speed rail is as any rail system that is at a higher speed than traditional rail, which sounds a little redundant. But worldwide, there are a bunch of different specifications for what actually makes a rail high speed. But you can expect the average train to go about 200 kilometers per hour, or 120 miles per hour, but the fastest trains can even surpass 300 kilometers per hour, getting up to sometimes speeds of 350 kilometers an hour, or more than 200 miles an hour. Where the average Accela train, the highest speed corridor between DC and New York City, you know, just some of the most populous cities on the eastern seaboard, goes at an average of 80 miles per hour, or 128 kilometers per hour. Now, I bet you're thinking, these trains are the best innovation since roundabouts. If I could marry a roundabout, I would. Okay, uh, maybe that's just what I think, but I assure you, after I go over the positives, you'll be on the same train of thought. I'm sure you've seen many different conceptual maps of high-speed rail here in the US, and while none of them are done by Amtrak or even a privatized company, they do show interest of not only improving our rail speeds, but improving the lines themselves. An interest in a future where major cities are able to connect to each other in a network and where bus and inefficient bus transfers are a thing of the past. And now that I've mentioned other forms of transit, did you know that trains are more fuel efficient than cars and planes? While some trains are diesel, there are numerous models that are electric, but it's not the fuel type that makes these marvels of innovation so damn fuel efficient. He wanted to say, sexy, you can see it in his eyes. Instead, throughput is where these trains are really on track. Looking at Minneapolis's own inner city light rail, the average section of train is about two to three car lengths long. Two to three cars can hold anywhere from two to 12 people. However, considering a 2016 study, about 76% of Americans drive to work alone, meaning that two to three cars would really only hold two to three people while a single section of train can hold 66 seated people and 120 standing people. The higher the ridership, the better the fuel efficiency, and high-speed rail would definitely improve ridership. Hell, even current Amtrak rivals that of the almighty car. While there are over 200 million cars in the US right now, not every American owns a car. Typically, these people are lower socioeconomic status, but not always. If they have an emergency or just want to go somewhere, plane tickets can be prohibitively expensive. Adding rail as an additional option, I mean, like, rail is already an option, but like, you know, a, a real option, allows average Americans the ability to travel across the US and even those with cars, the ability to travel more safely in the US. Because like, dead ass, deers crashing into cars is like a multi-million dollar industry, and the deer industrial complex needs to be stopped. Well, Max, that's all good and dandy, but I'm never taking a train. I think planes are sexier. All right, I also think planes are attractive. <laughs> So it's good that with more options like a high-speed rail network, that plane companies will feel somewhat pressure to lower their prices to compete with a much more convenient, cheaper way to travel. But Max, I prefer the freedom of a car. Personally, I don't understand cussy, but whatever floats your boat. Or drives your car. 
but you'll be happy to know that with updated rail lines, there will be much less traffic on your journey to your next road trip destination. However, dear viewers, I cannot lie to you. There are drawbacks on high-speed rail. The biggest being that the high-speed rail we have in the U.S. right now sucks. You may be thinking, Max, how is that a big deal? Like, if this big high-speed rail initiative is going to come in and fix everything. If we get more of something like Isela, where it's an amazing innovation, but its speed is ultimately capped due to 75 miles per hour speed limits, despite the train itself can go up to 150 miles an hour, and we implement these standards across the US, then we're still going to be decades behind other nations. And more importantly, our investment won't be fully realized and we will not see all of the benefits of high-speed rail. If this all sounds amazing to you and you want to break off some of that good, good high-speed rail, that real high-class trussy, <laughs> check out funhighspeedrail.org for information on contacting your elected officials in a call script if you don't know what to say. But if you're still not sold, then stick around because we're going to debunk a bunch of comments about high-speed rail in rapid fire. Yeah, that's right, baby. High speed. <laughs> The U.S. is too big for high-speed rail. Sure, some of the best high-speed rail is in smaller countries like Germany, Italy, and Japan. However, the current leader in high-speed goes to China, of which I might remind you, despite it is of slightly smaller mass in total than the U.S., is of bigger land mass than the U.S. by 1% or approximately 3.5 million square miles. China implemented rail in most of their major population hubs in less than 10 years from 2008 to 2017, and they have shown no sign of slowing down. But high-speed rail is too expensive! As the actual richest country in the world, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for the US. Or we could stop giving money to Israel. <laughs> high-speed rail will destroy small towns that rely on car travel. Isn't it funny that we only care about small towns when it directly relates to our interests? But also, these towns will actually be helped by high-speed rail. In the Seattle-Vancouver corridor alone, the goal was to connect the surrounding towns to the larger cities. High-speed rail will destroy cities with ugly railways. Oh, okay, it's just, just like highways, I get it. Luckily, there are a plethora of options for high-speed rail to fit into our cities. We could remove lanes from our highways or repurpose our parking lots. Or we could integrate the rail with pub existing public transport downtown, like Excella in New York City. Or we could build infrastructure that connects folks downtown to rail outside the city. Well, if it's so great, then why does the U.S. not have it? Well, Henry Ford, the Elon Musk at his time, lobbied the U.S. government to invest in the newfangled automobile. And the U.S. jumped at the proposition and tore down many neighborhoods of people of color in order to build cool new highways. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because Elon Musk has made the public transit of the future. Well, that's the end of the video. If you liked the video, like the video, comment your favorite train model down below, and as always, my links are down in the description. I hope you have a great day or whenever you're watching this. Okay, bye.